Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and thank you so much for honoring our invitation once again on your favorite bilingual program, The Brief, where we always get to dig several layers beneath the major headlines as captured by newspaper. A 61-page document has been published by Amnesty Rights a Group, Amnesty International, chronicling the sufferings of the population of the northwest and southwest regions of uh, the country in the document that was published uh, recently. You will get testimonies of those that have had to uh, go through uh, some violations of fundamental rights uh, either in the hands of the military, militia or separatist uh, fighters. We shall also uh, talk about the Bamenda Babaju stretch of road which will be completed come December 2023. The revelation was uh, made uh, recently in Bamenda by Public Works Minister Emmanuel Nganun Jumisi who went visiting some major infrastructural development or projects in uh, the northwest region of uh, the country. Many other interesting headlines are here for you this morning. But meantime, let's go find out what a topic content has been gathering in some major French language newspapers. Bonjour, a topic content. Bonjour, Lacha Kinsili. Bonjour à nos millions de téléspectateurs. Eh bien, débrief 5 juin 2023 sur ma première télévision. La presse écrite est abondante ce jour. L'on parlera de la présidentielle 2023 à venir au Cameroun et difficultés budgétaires du gouvernement entre 2022-2023, le centre a créé et bien d'autres sujets encore sans oublier les nominations à Côte-Côte. Démarrons ce devoir quotidien avec le journal Camarouest News, le journal Camarouest News arrivé à notre rédaction ce matin, titre encore de une Côte-Côte, beaucoup Baco, pardon, des finances que le Camerounais Baco Aruna, directeur général adjoint du port autonome du crédit, a été propulsé au majestueux poste de directeur général de cette importante compagnie publicitaire et sera secondé par une nationalité italienne du nom de Oua Debi, permettant ainsi aux deux pays frères d'enterrer les incompréhensions qui, dans un premier temps, auraient fragilisé les relations diplomatiques entre le Cameroun et le Tchad. Le même journal évoque en sa petite une le centre de gestion à Gréé, abrégé à CGA. La huitième édition des caravanes de sensibilisation se tient du 4 au 5 juillet à Bamenda. C'est dans un contexte particulier marqué par l'implémentation de nombreuses innovations fiscales contenues dans la loi de finances pour l'exercice 2022. En tout cas, vous verrez les détails de ces actualités respectives dans ce journal en kiosque ce matin. Poursuivons en économie, bien évidemment, avec le journal Econews. Econews emprunte obligataire 2023 les 20,5% d'Afriland Bourse. C'est ce que nous propose d'ailleurs le journal en grand titre ce matin. Plus loin, dans les colonnes et lignes des pages 5 et 6, l'on peut lire au terme des opérations du septième emprunt obligataire, l'État du Cameroun a obtenu de la COSUMAF, le régulateur des marchés financiers en Afrique centrale, l'autonomisation d'Afriland absorbé les 26,6 milliards de francs CFA de surplus des souscriptions lesquelles viennent renchérir l'enveloppe recherchée à environ 177 milliards de francs CFA en député de la frilosité observée sur les marchés financiers comment un tel record a été atteint en tout cas le décryptage de cette question est à retrouver 
dans cette parution en kiosque ce euh, matin. Et puis, euh, parlons euh, à présent à période 2022-2024 pour ce qui concerne le gouvernement euh, face aux difficultés budgétaires avec le journal Expression économique. Expression économique tente nous, euh, de nous expliquer que il s'agit d'une part des facteurs exogènes durée de la pandémie, évolution des cours des matières premières et de la demande mondiale et d'autre part des facteurs endogènes relatifs notamment à l'efficacité des initiatives prises par l'État pour préserver les emplois et relancer l'économie. En tout cas, les détails sont à retrouver dans les pages 6 et 7 de ce numéro en kiosque ce matin. Plongeons à présent dans la politique, bien sûr, avec le journal Flambeau. Flambeau, titre en grande, une pierre Gévin Nguette 2. Il faut que Paul Bia soit reconduit en 2025. Les biaïstes dans l'âme, le président de la sous-section RDPC Seine et Marne dans la section RDPC France Nord évoque les raisons qui doivent pousser les Camerounais à accorder un nouveau mandat au président Paul Biya lors de la prochaine élection présidentielle. En tout cas, vous aurez le comment et le pourquoi de cette information dans la page 7 de ce numéro en kiosque. Ce matin, poursuivons dans la même mouvance avec reporter, reporter Hebdo qui s'intéresse également à la présidentielle 2025 et titre en sa grande une, cher ministre, vos bilans avant les appels du tube digestif et bien si l'on s'en tient au développement proposé par nos confrères dans la page 3 de ce tabloïd en kiosque ce matin, comme nous l'indique bien dans un précédent article le rituel des appels à la candidature de Paul Biya pour l'élection présidentielle 2025 est lancé mais sans aucun bilan quant aux prestigieuses missions confiées s'il est du droit des membres du gouvernement et autres dignitaires du régime d'appeler Paul Biya le président de la République à se représenter pour la magistrature suprême il n'en demeure pas moins qu'une évaluation de chemin parcouru s'impose par éthique morale et devoir de redevabilité aussi serait bien séant pour chaque membre du gouvernement de faire premièrement le bilan de son action avant d'appeler Pobia à se représenter pour l'élection présidentielle d'octobre 2025. En tout cas, rendez-vous dans la page 3 de cette parution en kiosque ce matin. Mesdames et Messieurs, voilà, c'est tout pour la lecture des unes en langue française. Place actuellement à la découverte des autres tables avec toi la chatine chili une fois de plus bonjour thank you etape canton good morning once again televia so my media prime television let's kick start this morning with the guardian post newspaper the guardian post is uh, interested in uh, uh, what is happening at the level of fake food in yaounde after njala kwanji neo resignation only one anglophone in 18 member fake food executive committee tier provoking marginalization of anglophones since creation of uh, fake food Let's uh, take you to talk about the UN 79th General Assembly Presidency, Philemu Yang in poor position as ECAS state's support candidacy. Cameroon's uh, former Prime Minister, Head of Government and current Grand Chancellor of National Order, Philemu Yang is in poor position for the presidency of the 79th General Assembly of the United Nations UN. Read the details on page 7 of this edition of the Guardian Post newspaper on to this headline that has to do with the release of CPDM section president in Momo division of the Northwest region kidnapped section uh, CBDN section president others regain freedom some supporters of the Cameroon People's Democratic uh, Movement CBDN party in Momo division Northwest region of Cameroon who were adopted on May 21 2023 when they were uh, on their way back for 20th May have emerged from uh, unknown they were uh, seen in a video uh, circulating on social media recently. They were released by their captors, as we are told by these newspapers who got the information or which got the information. Let's uh, talk about the congratulatory message of Dr. Christopher Formenu to the Senegalese uh, president, Dr. Christopher Formenu, his uh, Senegalese president, for decision not to seek re-election. 
get the details of that uh, message of Dr. Christopher Fominion in this edition of uh, the Guardian Post newspaper that you can find on newspaper kiosk this morning. On to Municipal Updates newspaper. Municipal Updates is taking us to Bermenda to talk about the visit of uh, Public Works Minister uh, Nganun Jumisi. Bermenda Babaju route tiring to be completed December 2023. The Minister of Public Works Emmanuel Nganun Jumisi made the revelation or announcement that has sparked joy amongst the people of the northwest region of the country that was yesterday the announcement was made yesterday while he visiting major road projects in the administrative unit read the details in this edition of the set newspaper and njala kwan junior resigns as feka food vice president his resignation comes shortly after he was indefinitely suspended by the uh, same uh, institution as we are told by municipal updates newspaper we leave municipal updates newspaper we are with uh, uh, action or laxion newspaper laxion is interested in uh, what the paper terms uh, production of gas and a job creation job in the horizon rights laxion newspaper the ratification of the bilateral cooperation signed between Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea in March this year would pave the way for the exploitation of Yoyo Yolanda cross-border gas field. And this exploitation would uh, see employment uh, gain or more employment gain in the two countries, as we are told by L'Action newspaper. We end this morning with uh, the Herald Tribune newspaper. The Herald Tribune is focusing on the outing of NCC boss, NCC boss who cautions media practitioners against the use of hate speech in the country. Thank you so much, Televias of My Media Prime, for watching. We are back in the studio to continue with our discussion. This morning, we are receiving Amadou Tante and Christian Tebon, our own producer. He is on set this morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Bonjour, uh, Monsieur. Uh, merci uh, d'avoir accepté notre invitation sur le plateau. Nous avons uh, Monsieur Amadou Tanti. Bonjour, Monsieur. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Tare, and good morning to Mr. Jackins. Good morning to me, for my co-finalists, and thank you very much for giving this opportunity to be here on your studio. Très bon, Christian. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Lasha Kingsley. Good morning to you, Canton Etape, and uh, Mr. Madu Tante. Uh, thanks uh, very much for receiving me in your studio. I've mm, always been telling you as a surprise. <laughs> I've, I've always, been always been behind. <laughs> behind the machine. <laughs> the decided to come on today. Yeah. So what what prompted you? We we reading so many interesting headlines, but you are not here for those interesting headlines, but for something else. A report published by Amnesty International regarding some violations or rights uh, that has been violated uh, on citizens of the northwest and southwest regions of Cameroon. Yes, uh, Lasha, thank you very much. Uh, the tears provoking uh, report, 61 page report by the rights group Amnesty International is a call for concern and I think that uh, if I'm here this morning uh, to corroborate with what my Co panelists will, will see because he has always been on the field yes. in the northwest uh, region, particularly in divisions across the northwest region. I think uh, from the report that we've read since uh, yesterday, we got the report, uh, it is something that is really touching. Amnesty International, uh, a right, a reputable rights group that has been operating in, uh, that, is, that is an international organization that has been operating in the country, has chronicled some of the atrocities caused by three group of uh, people, three groups. Uh, Amnesty International says we have the separatist fighters, you have uh, the army, the, the people having guns, and you have another group, Amnesty International says the militia. No, and then, can you can you elaborate on each of these groups? Then you say militia. Militia apparently are people who are not authorized to have guns. Yeah. Yes, from from so the, the separatists are already they are well known. Yes. Yeah, uh, from the, the from the three from what Amnesty International explained in the report, uh, the the report states that the militia are the Mbororo headsmen mm. who are mostly in the the Ndonga Mantum division. In the, in the mainstream division mm -hmm. and they have also been committing atrocities in those uh, divisions in the northwest region particularly in uh, villages 
between the border the border between uh, Ndonga and Mantum division as well as Ni Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So the, the 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 rice group found it very unacceptable for people to hold guns. Where did these people get the guns? Because apparently, as I see, they were armed. They were given the guns by by some some well-known people. Yes, uh, Lasha Kingsley. I wouldn't know where they got their guns, but one thing is certain: they are tr um, um, uh, truck loads of weapons. They are cache of weapons uh, separate um, uh, circulating in the northwest and southwest region, either owned by the separatist fighters what they call the amber boys mm. the militia the moro headsmen as well as the military who are the author the only authorized group of people to, carry, the to gun. carry guns to protect civilians but on the other hand we've noticed that from the report that amnesty international published we've discovered that there are some other rights abuses committed by the military Yes, if you if you read through the report, there is a, a story of a, a lady called Monica mm. in the, the Momo division that was raped for ten weeks by soldiers, and was hit, raped and impregnated by soldiers, and she later um, uh, delivered a set of twins. Mm. So it is really a, a, a tears provoking report. There are also reports of. Um, uh, headsmen invading villages, mm. destroying um, uh, women's farm, as well as looting, mm. and ensuring that the people cannot more live in such villages. There are also reports of amber boys kidnapping people and taking a lot of money. So in in, in from from so, what so so how is this report different from the other reports that have been published by? Uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Human Rights Watch and other Amadou Tante. I will come back to you. Let me ask Amadou Tante, who has been working <laughs> on the ground, how is this report different from the other reports that have been published uh, by uh, Human Rights Watch and other international rights groups? Yeah, thank you. Thank you once more, Mr. Lasha. Uh, well, with a due respect, let me just start first of all by saying something else. But it's really related to the Amcron crisis. We're coming to the report of Amnesty International. You can bear with me that about a more than one week ago, mm -hmm. the armed separatists, particularly in Bamisin, mm -hmm. have a uh, prohibited movement between the, the three, three divisions of the Northwest. That is in the Okutunja division. And it's still on, eh? It's still on. I remember. I just yes. came back from the village about two days ago. Mm -hmm. We were obliged to use a very porous road, which is a true Pumban to, to my village in Baba One. It's very really unfortunate that the, the separatists in a particular village would decide to impose lockdown on the on three divisions of the Northwest North region, thereby penalizing the, the citizens. Because this route, the military that they are prohibiting the movement from, they are still prohibiting the movement from the, from the civilian. But the military are still moving through this route without any, without any major problem. But they are threatening to, to target anybody who will dare. Uh, violate this rule. It's really regrettable because these people are said, penalizing the, the citizens who are in this area or the civilians who are in this area. A lot of things are going on wrong. We have the road we used, we used the other day from uh, between Bangurin and Bangulan. The nature of the road is very terrible. And you, we, when we were coming back, I realized that there was one of the camions that were carrying food from that way. So also carry food from Bamenda to I don't know which to, to this, the French part of Cameroon. They had to use the other road. And we, when we were coming back, we realized one of the camions has even fallen inside the inside, inside the rice farm along along the straight of road because of the bad nature of the road. So I'm just praying to the separatist leaders and the separatist uh, fighters who are on the ground who have done this issue to look into the situation as soon as possible so as to release the civilians. At least this is not the right thing we are supposed to be doing. We are instead penalizing our people. Yes. We, yeah. Well, concerning the report, the report now, so uh, what, what is the, the, the element that makes this, this report more important and more, uh, uh, how do I put it, I know, important than other reports or serious than other reports that have been published by other international rights groups. Uh, well, let me say, say first of all that the first uh, thing that called my attention on this report is that the, the Amnesty International have made it very clear that they made two tour to Cameroon. It's not something that they, they were in Europe or they were wherever they are as they were doing the anniversary investigation. They made two tour in Cameroon. They visited so many uh, non-governmental international organizations in Cameroon, working in Cameroon. Many embassies, especially the European Union and the US Embassy, and even the, those of the National Commission of Human Rights, even though they, they said that all attempts to meet with ministers in Cameroon, like defense minister, territorial administration, and others were in vain. Mm -hmm. And second, they said the second mission on the field 
particularly in the northwest zone, they send people directly to, to meet the victims and other people. It's not something, as I said, something that they went and had first-class information of what actually is happening in the northwest, particularly in the northwest zone, because they had to meet the different people to hear their stories and make the document these stories. Again, you will bear with me that Amnesty International clarified things, try to make all understand that in this region we have three groups of people who are operating. Because many people know that we have only the defense and security forces on the other side and the arms separate. But there has always been this issue of re amber and the ambers that are not real now. Well, apart from the ambers who might be real, or real ambers, the ambers that are not real. You know, it's not very easy to distinguish the real ambers from the, the ambers that are not real. But apart from which that, ambers are the real ambers and which ones are not the real ambers? The issue is that even with, uh, with regards, to, well, most often we say that it depends maybe on the reason why people are joining this group because we have some re the real uh, fanatics, those who are really Amazonian by, by blood that are really determined to fight for this war. But we have, equally have some of people who have entered this group maybe for retaliation or those who have really entered to make money. So go and kidnap people for money and all the rest. But mm -hmm. apart from other militias, we equally have other militias like the Fulani. In most situations, we know that there are some Fulanis in other areas like Mwa and we have um, uh, in, uh, in, in, in Menchum Division and other areas who are equally operating. They are doing some of some very, very, very funny things, either targeting the population like the situation in a womb and other funny situations. And in this situation, a report of Amnesty International they have equally make also understand that the crisis is not only between separatists and uh, and the different security forces because we also have crisis between full and of areas against the population or we have full we have the the separatists against the against the full army because in areas like in mentioned divisions we have the, the most of in some areas we have like in women central in particular the situation is between the the muslim community there and the sometimes muslim community being sometimes guarded by the by the military, the, the defense and security forces go and commit atrocities in order to civilians or civilian properties, according to what Amnesty International is saying. And we go in, in other areas like Hindu, you see, realize that the, the, the Mororo or the Fulani have always been suffering from the hand of the separatists. The separatists have targeted the Fulani for virtually no reason, and they have killed so many of them, destroyed their properties, seized their cattle, and so many other funny things in, the, in this area, which is really unacceptable. And uh, I will still go on to say that uh, Amnesty International equally made us to understand that. Uh, they will, we will have a lot of hate speech which is going on between people in living this area like the separatists in some area will say this, they are saying that the the, the Bororo have testified some of the Bororo have full have testified that sometimes the population of this area particularly in Lu, they tell them that uh, and uh, that you we are you are not uh, supposed to be here this is our land you don't own any land a full animal is not don't have any land every anyway so go back to where you came from and all those kind of funny things where are all Cameroonians and we should live in harmony wherever we are living and having doing whatsoever they say that fighting for their freedom or whatsoever does not have anything to impact on the negatively on the life of any other person who is living whether the person is from which area or wherever area we are all in the same country or in the same area and have the right to the same land the same land and, and other other things as such there's another group that probably uh, Amnesty International forgot, the vigilante group. No, when they say militias, they are referring to both the vigilante groups, the Fulanese, <laughs> and the other groups. There's another, and the vigilante group, most often they, they are supported by big politicians who have seen cases in, the, in Donga Mountain. You no, know, this has been. I think this has been detailed in the reports because I may, maybe I did not say I did not mention it because uh, Amnesty International tried to make us understand that in some areas, particularly in mentioned divisions, we have other armed militias that are where they assume that some people, the people on the ground have testified that they they are thinking that these people are being backed by some influential uh, personalities or influential people in around the area. So those are some of the kind of things that uh, the, the kind of thing that you know, they are referring to as uh, militias. So what is the, the way forward? Um, well, the, the report has been published. All of us have, have yeah, read the let, report. Let me, let me so we'll re the report will just be read and then we'll fold our arms or government or the citizens fold their arms and... <laughs> let me, please, do this. Let me say, uh, well, uh, I mean, amongst everything, Amnesty International gave their own recommendations of what they think should be done. This report, as Mr. Tebon said, is more than a 60 page document that mm -hmm. has been documented to that effect. They made it very clear that, among other things, they have first of all called the government of Cameroon to carry out a thorough investigation, an independent investigation, to find out actually the, to, to, to ascertain the veracity of this report that they are saying and make sure that those who are involved should be arrested and prosecuted. They went on to say that calling on the international partners of Cameroon, Cameroon particularly France, uh, United States of America, Croatia, Russia, who are collaborating with Cameroon, who are collaborating uh, militarily with Cameroon, those who are selling gold to, uh, weapons to Cameroon, to make sure that they find out from Cameroon what actually they are buying these weapons to do with. Because in most instances, it's either the, the defense and security forces are using these, these weapons against the unarmed civilians, or the separatist fighters who, in the other way around, seize these weapons from the defense and security forces and use the, the same weapons against the population. So they are calling on this international community to make sure that those who are collaborating military with Cameroon, make sure that they stop from supplying weapons, these weapons to the government of Cameroon. Okay. Yes, um, uh, uh, Mr. Lasha, before uh, you, you ask the way forward, mm -hmm. uh, I will say here that the people of the Northwest and Southwest regions, whom 
they thought that soldiers, the, the, the amber boys, can protect, as well as the vigilante that you just cited, mm. they are suffering. Let me give you some instances. He said here that it is over a week that people cannot leave Bamenda, the regional headquarters, to go Kutunjia, Bui, Undonga, Mantum, through the Bamisingh, that is the National Number 11 Road. Mm. The separatists are saying that they are there to protect civilians. Why civilians cannot have access to health, to health care, they cannot have access to food, they cannot have access to other basic amenities in other areas, for instance, like the area of the north of Bamenda Regional Capital. Those are some of the things that are unheard of. Number two is that you imagine that separatist fighters are not able to allow even the mothers who are living in the villages to go to the market to sell their food in the name of ghost town, lockdown, as those are crimes. And that is the reason why Amnesty International is making sure that the government of Cameroon should understand that as we continue fighting, that is how the suffering of the people, because according to the government of Cameroon, the military is there to protect the civilians. But if you protect the civilians where they still live in misery, then they should be, you should redress the situation. You think of another method to ensure that these, the civilians who are living there should, not, should, should come out of pain. The, the difference in this report is that from what I read, mm. the report is there with, the, 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 the various cases are cited with images. And they did what we call one-to-one -one interview with the victims mm. of these, the various areas. And they are there to tell their stories. Unlike people who sit elsewhere and say, no, it is, there's no mercy because maybe in Bamenda, people are moving, bikes are moving, and so on. But in some other areas, the bikes cannot move. People don't have access to some basic uh, commodities that they need mm. in, their, in that locality. Okay. Uh, and Tabe can tell you have something to add. You want to add? No, je n'ai pas quelque chose à ajouter. You want to change? Yes. Sujet. Let, let's conclude on the, yes, voilà. on, the, on the subject before we move. We move to the next uh, uh, the topic. Amadou Tante, you talked about the recommendations. What needs to be done? Don't you think dialogue? To, because these recommendations are were made to government, and government has to work on those uh, recommendations as well as uh, international partners to the government of the Republic of Cameroon. Why take on other solutions when we can use the dialogue table? We can sit on the dialogue table and sort out issues. Well, I think on, in conclusion of all this report, what the final say is always dialogue. But the issue is that we, as human rights organizations, they concentrate most on atrocities. They look more into the, into the sufferings of the population. It's true that they have... That's, just, that's, just, that's, just, the the effect, that's just the effect of the, the war. war. Yes. So if you focus on the effect no, without treating the real cause of the problem, you keep on focusing on the no, effect. No, we have to look at what is happening before giving the, this as recommendation. We have to look at the situation of the sufferings that people are going through, face with the human rights violations and abuses that is going on on the ground, before now talking about the recommendations for, for this thing, which is what, what they have done. You can bear, even on the report, they made it very clear there that uh, uh, the, the copy of the report was sent to the Ministry of Defense and the Ministry of uh, Justice about more than one month ago, but up to date they have not responded. No, that our, why, our, why our was he sent? Why was he sent there for them to validate? Well, them to validate. Yes, well, say validate to, to, to cross check and see if the things that they are saying yeah, is not right, it's right. like you want to access somebody to come to your house and rob you. No, just the government should go. The government would have even, they would have even responded. Amadou Tante, I give you a letter that I'm coming. Right. It's not true. I'm, I'm coming to your house to come and attack you. Actually, say, okay, come, come uh, tomorrow at 10, 10 p.m. and come and rob me. No, it's, this one is not something like that. <laughs> because the government has already signed international engagement that they, yeah. are, they, are, they should be open. And there is another funny thing that is done on the report that the government of Cameroon have not been able to give authorization to international rights groups like uh, the Af uh, African Union groups and the other group from the United Nations to come into Cameroon and carry out their investigation. They are all attempt to this. Uh, as a Failed, according to what Amnesty International uh, report is saying, and they are equally making also understand that this report, first of all, it will create awareness because the people, the government of Cameroon, have been saying everywhere that the situation is under control. But Amnesty International making us understand that up to date, as we are speaking, everything is not under control. The situation might have calmed down, but the, the situation and is, there's no peace, as they are saying. Go, know that peace is not only the absence of, uh, not only the presence of conflict, but all the, the other serious threats. 
to peace is already equal, equally a serious problem because the people are not able to eat they are not able to move freely freely from one village to the other because they you in, either you pay ransom to separatists or you know they they, they defend the security forces will call you that you don't have identity card you are collaborating collaborating with the military or an uh, a, a woman who is in 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 uh, or a, a full animal who is in uh, in Ndu will not be able to go to his farm because separatists have taken up to their farms and they are there to attack them if you attempt to come to the farm because in Ndu we, we the report is saying that in even Ndu the separatist fighters as a Prevented the the, the, the population, the particular full and men from going to the the areas where they are running their cattle, saying that if so they, what, they, what 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 has become of the cattle? No, they transferred them to, to, to other areas. Some of the cattle have transferred to areas. areas other have been taken by the separatists, and in some areas, some of these people are saying that even they saw a report that was written by the DO of Ndu warning because this full and were saying that when they take when they drive them from this area, they take this land, some of the separatists, and give it to their family members, so their close relatives, meaning that they, they say that they should go away, that the full and people does not own any land here. So those are some of the kind of funny things that the government is supposed to look into this situation to make sure that we we solve this problem once and for all. At least we stop looking at cosmetic solutions and look to. Okay, we stay in Bamenda, uh, the, the Christian Tebo, to talk about Bamenda Babaju stretch of route. Minister Nganu Jumisi has announced that uh, the route will be completed come December 2023. Are you hopeful this time around? Yes, uh, I am very I am very hopeful, uh, given the fact that uh, people applying that uh, stretch of road have been uh, in pains they have been suffering uh, to leave Douala for instance to go to uh, the northwest region when you get to Babaju you start praying that oh God help me let me say through a very bad portion but for now I think I've gotten uh, reports that the road is passable and the government is doing great, uh, quite, uh, uh, they, they are so rapid in ensuring that they meet up with the deadline. I'm so hopeful because I know that uh, as uh, Mr. Emmanuel... We, we Emmanuel are in, in the, the, during the, the dry season or rainy season. I think it's, it's, a, it's a policy of the nation. Eh? I don't know. Most roads in the country are constructed in the rainy season. I don't know why. I'm not an engineer, uh, civil engineer, so I don't, I don't know. Most <laughs> of roads in the country are constructed in the uh, dry, uh, rainy season. But I am very hopeful because as the road construction work is going on in uh, the, on the Babaju Bamenda Road, that is how it's also going on uh, on the Buddha Galim Road, yeah, passing through the, 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 the compound of uh, uh, Mr. Emmanuel Ngannou Jumesi. I think that uh, this time around we are very hopeful that they will meet up with the deadline. Okay, it's Voilà, euh, sur euh, la question euh, des routes euh, dans cette partie du pays, euh, c'était un projet beaucoup euh, euh, voulu par le président euh, du Social Démocratique Front. Malheureusement, il est parti. Aujourd'hui, euh, on, on est informé que la, les travaux de la Ring Road vont débuter avant la fin de cette année. Alors, c'est un projet en retard, M. Amadou Tante. Je vous remercie pour la question. Je vais commencer par dire, par exemple, que je commence par les autorités et les autorités pour ce qu'ils font sur la route, même si ils ont été en train de faire une snail pace très slow, parce que c'est un long temps. Le même ministre que je parlais avant, il a parlé avant, il a parlé tellement de fois, et il a dit la même chose, et nous sommes ici aujourd'hui, et il a parlé de la même chose. C'est pour ça que nous vous demandons, est-ce que vous êtes hopeful cette fois-ci Non, le problème est que la route a été parlé parce que nous avons passé la route pour savoir... Ils ont donné une date, 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 ils this announcement. This well, until it is done, I will never be hopeful because the government, this government have made the men have to understand that fact. They don't respect their engagement until finally when they, they do something that will believe that they, they will do it, even though they are they are fact, they are tearing the roots slowly, as I was saying. But uh, we want the, the, them to accelerate this, the rate at which they are tearing the roots and other roots uh, in Cameroon which are not uh, on a good stage. Yes, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Lash, Mr. Uh, Lasha, uh, let me uh, add before uh, 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 you see the, some of the difficulties that the government face is that they 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 receive this money from um, uh, people from funders from 
banks abroad from nations who have appealed that they will help. Okay. And sometimes they face difficulties in the financing process. I want to tell you, if you see the, 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 the number of years that the road Bamenda Manfe took to be constructed, you will bear with me that the road between Buddha, that is Babaju, Bamenda, it has not yet started. Yes. So we. So they, what extent, when you say difficulties in finance, it means that somebody pledged money, and at the end of the day, the person does not give them. Yes, money. They, 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 there are plenty of difficulties in the transfer of money, difficulty in getting funds. That's just what I want. Sometimes these roads are, are funded by the ADB, African Development Bank. Sometimes by by, uh, by the Exim Bank of China, and before money leaves there, gets to Cameroon and so uh, so on and so forth. There are many process. There are a lot of process that are taking place. But the good thing about the Babaju, Bamenda Road is that it's passable and the road, we, we cannot say now, yet now that uh, separatists are disturbing that road. For that it is all over. The road is, the work on the road is gradually um, moving forward and we hope that since the minister has given us a deadline of uh, 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 December, December we are very hopeful and we are also calling on the minister that when he says December, he should always be checking on that road. It is not difficult to check. But, the, but this is the problem, not the contractors. When you say still check, you take a contract, you are supposed to execute a contract. Don't call a contractor on phone. Go there and check. It's not difficult to leave um, Yaoundé to Babaju. How many hours does it take? He has car, he has um, a four, he has everything. He should check. Go there and check. If a contractor tells you, no, Mr. Um, Lemonis, I will go there the next day. Go there and check. If you check, you will be able to ascert whether the contractor will meet up. Because he is seen as a minister. He is not the engineers. He is not the contractor. The contractor, some of them are not even engineers. Some of them are business people. And you have engineers that will assure the contractor, no, no, what you are saying tomorrow, we'll just put this, this, and that. And at the end, you see that they, they should constantly be checking. Ah oui. Mr. Thibault, excusez-moi de vous couper. Alors, selon le journal Expression économique, 6 milliards de francs CFA sont déjà mobilisés pour l'entretien des routes dans le nord-ouest. Vous êtes certainement quelqu'un qui a voyagé, qui a effectué des séjours dans cette partie du pays. Alors, au regard de la réalité du terrain... Est-ce qu'on peut dire aujourd'hui que ces 6 milliards, milliards là sont vraiment euh, ces 6 dépensés milliards ont été dépensés à bon escient y Yes, um, if I got you well, Canton, oui. uh, if the 6 billion, right, mm -hmm. is there good, but I'm saying that the 6 billion is not even enough to construct the roads in the Northwest. The situation the is the maintenance. Really the paper is talking about, about maintenance, maintenance of, of road. The, that road. Has, has, uh, the maintainer has already swallowed six billion francs CFA <laughs> for roads <laughs> in the northwest swallowed. region of the country. <laughs> the Tafe <laughs> Kante asks you whether what the paper is saying does it conform with realities on the ground that these six billion francs CFA yeah. have been pumped into the maintenance of roads yeah. in the northwest? See, yeah, the, po the politics of contracting in the country. It's a whole um, um, uh, exercise that one needs to go and sit and learn. Mm. If you say that six billion francs CFA has been pumped into the maintenance of work, is it the maintenance the, of roads? Of roads? In the is region. it the road that has been destroyed, the, the Tar City Road of Bamenda, that the, the city mayor said that as they are removing the, the tar, destroying houses that went to tar the road, or oh, the six billion, how is it used? Let me tell you to leave Bamenda to whom is a nightmare. <laughs> to leave Bamenda to, uh, um, uh, to, 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 just to leave Bamenda to Santa. He said, San, Bamenda Santa used to be Santa Division. Santa uh, subdivision. subdivision. He, he's in the Maison. Mm. It used to be 10 to 15 minutes, you are already in Santa. Yeah. But today, you can use more than one, uh, one or two hours uh, to, to get to Santa. Yeah, to, get to, Santa. to get to Santa. Santa is just about 30 kilometers away from Bamenda. 
So you see, if they are saying that they have used six billion, well, it could be six billion used on paper. You know, sometimes we purchase pen, a single pen for a thousand five hundred in the country. Monsieur Madou Tante, votre réaction sur ce que venait de dire Monsieur Tante. Well, I don't permit me. Let me. I don't really actually know how they are they are examining things or what what they are saying because even within the central town of Bamenda, in the nature of the route within the central town in Bamenda is that six billion is even small to maintain routes in the central town. No, no, I'm saying that the nature of the route presently. So as we are speaking, within the central town of Bamenda is terrible. Within the central town, there is potholes everywhere. Was it, was it a bad feasibility so, study made by the city mayor that the, the, somebody fooled him that they should scrape off the other tasks, the tasks that were the, formerly there? <laughs> for, at, at the end of the day, the money was not there to tie the road. Uh, well, I, will, I cannot say. Maybe they know how the policy or how they are functioning. Because sometimes when they are saying that since this amount of money has already been used, maybe it has been used in uh, giving bribes to, to those hierarchies so that they can permit the crowd to go into the field and walk. But when they are counting the amount to of money... To go now to the field and walk with what? But when they, they, they are talking about the money that have been used, they are not only talking about the money that they have deposited on the ground. Because when you go there as a contractor to work, from even from the ministry, you know, we also take this money, you start giving bribe from there up to the ground zero, the ground level where you are going to do the work. That's why most often they end up, even if they're doing the work, they don't do the work perfectly well because they have already given bribe and don't have enough money to carry out the good and to carry out proper work on the, on, on the field. Yeah, Mr. Amadou Tanto, most of this uh, money that you say they have been used is because most contractors they give fake bank statements. Because when you give a, state, a bank statement, you are taking a contract and you are telling the contracting authority that is the vote holder, mm -hmm. the person who owns the contract, for instance, a local mayor in the in, in the in the municipality that okay, if you want to maintain this route, I have ten million in my bank account. Mm -hmm. And if this road is nineteen million, I have ten million already. Mm -hmm. So if you give me the contract, I will do the road. And when they give you the contract, you cannot do uh, 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 more than half of the work because it means the money is, the money is not there it means that you get a fake bank statement and that is what most contractors are doing if they are saying that six billion if you go to bamenda that is to, to, to the, bamenda uh, Chris, and there's, there's also another issue that many people have raised bad faith on the part of government that sometimes these contractors they use their money at to execute end. this contract at the end of the day it takes the four five years for government to pay them yeah. when well, they have executed the contract yes i, I know sure. people since 2014 mm -hmm. they have called me they have given me proof that their are contracts have executed and government has not paid them up to today i mean such a bottleneck some people say you must give 20 percent of the money if yes. not i'm not giving you the money they sit on the money yes it's not bad faith so how do you blame contractors when it comes to such issues. Yes, uh, Lasha Kingsley is not bad faith on the path of uh, uh, of the government. Mm -hmm. It's bad faith at the level of you who are given the job as government officials to do. You sit on the money. You so sit you on people's money. I, I'm close to contractors who are also complaining like, like what you were, you were saying. You cannot imagine that a contractor will use his money, goes and borrow money. Because mo most of the time, they are business people. Mm -hmm. They borrow money to do work. When they borrow money, four or five years you are not giving. He's removing his small money to pay interest yes. at, at the level of the bank. And at the end, you are not able to pay him. Then you expect him. The, the, another thing is that sometimes they call them and say, we want to compensate you by giving you another job. Hmm. Are you understand? And that is the reason why we keep, that is the reason why we keep having bad work. Yes. Euh, voilà, on va tenter hein, notre euh, regard sur cette actualité qui semble très importante pour euh, le pays et pour euh, le pays frère voisin, le Tchad. Alors, euh, voilà, par ailleurs, directeur adjoint du port autonome de Crébi, euh, Bako Aruna, est porté à la tête euh, de Koko, secondé par euh, la Tchadienne Awa Debi. Eh bien, c'était à l'issue d'un conseil d'administration tenu récemment en présence des autorités tchadiennes et camerounaises. Alors, au regard des antécédents euh, entre ces deux pays, c'est une initiative qui vient ainsi euh, permettre euh, aux deux partenaires d'enterrer des incompréhensions euh, voilà, entre, entre eux, euh, euh, M. Amadou Tante. Uh, well. Oh, please, can you give me exact, we are talking about the, yes, the director, uh, the assistant general manager of Port Authority of Douala has been named and installed as, uh, yeah, of Kribi, rather, thank you, of Kribi has been named and installed as 
the new Director General of Cotco Company Limited. Mm -hmm. You know what happened between uh, Chad and Cameroon. Cameroon. Yes, and at the end of the day, the Asif Hashis have been buried. The, <laughs> the Assistant General Manager of Cotco Company coming from Chad okay. and uh, the General Manager himself coming from Cameroon. They were all installed recently by Chadian officials. And so the problem has been laid to rest now, the problem between Cameroon and Chad. Well, if, that's, if that, that's what it is, then it's good. Because the issue is that I don't understand if uh, by appointing these people as director, a director, uh, as director, because director, there was already there was there was an appointment that was rejected by the official. Right to, to exercise that power. If you are supposed to have the independent on the post that you are handling, but if the government authorities still come in to, to impose things on you, try to insist that if you don't do this to respect it, like they will, they will do it this way, they will do it this way, they will, do it this way. They will, they will start complicating things. At least uh, we should always know that these people, when they are given an, a, a, a person as such, well, you should either Deputy General Manager is a Chadian, and if Chad is Dakor, because the most of the problem was that Chad did not accept the way the company was being managed or decisions taken at the end of that company, and at one moment Chad had to recall mm -hmm. their, their it's ambassador, their, it's a, a diploma in in the country. After negotiation, the Secretary General, the Presidency went to Chad. The the one of Chad came to Cameroon, and I think. It is uh, good they have ended up in, in nice terms. Okay. Our time is up, the gentlemen. Itabe uh, Kante, thank you for uh, for coming today. And mm -hmm. also, Madhu Tante, we are glad you were here to throw more lights on the Amnesty International report that was published uh, recently. Thank you to Televiasa of Media Prime Television for watching this other edition of the program produced for us by Afonsa, supervised by Tebon Christian, who was on set. And of course, we are hoping to be back tomorrow for more on what the newspaper.